In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Um, good morning. Um, glad to uh, be here with you to celebrate our Mass today. We celebrate a special Mass today because today we commemorate the lives of a number of martyrs. Martyrs who uh, served the people in North America um, and who met their martyrdom here as well. We're celebrating the feast day, of course, of Jean de Brebeuf, uh, Isaac Yog, and uh, their companions. They were French Jesuits who came to upstate New York and to present-day Canada in the 1600s and ministered to the Native Americans there. Um, and, and there they met their martyrdom. Um, and so today we celebrate their courageous witness to the faith. It's special for us uh, as well because we consider them uh, some of our patrons here at Christ the Divine Shepherd. Um, these French Jesuits are also known as the North American Martyrs. And so as we celebrate this Mass and this live stream, uh, we are also celebrating a Mass at North American Martyrs Church as we celebrate the feast day of uh, one of the patrons of our parish. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, who chose to manifest the blessed hope of your eternal kingdom by the toil of Saints Jean de Brebeuf, Isaac Jog, and their companions by the shedding of their blood, graciously grant that through their intercession, the faith of Christians may be strengthened day by day. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which, you, in which you once lived, following the age of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the disobedient. All of us once lived among them, in the desires of the flesh, following the wishes of the flesh and the impulses, and we were by nature children of wrath like the rest. But God, who is rich in mercy because of the great love he had for us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, brought us to life with Christ. By grace you have been saved raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavens in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from you, it is the gift of God. It is not from works, so no one may boast, for we are his handiwork, created in Christ Jesus for good works that God has prepared in advance that we should live in them. The word of the Lord. 
The responsorial psalm is, the Lord made us, we belong to him. The Lord made us, we belong to him. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with a joyful song. The Lord made us, we belong to him. Know that the Lord is God. He made us, his we are, his people, the flock he tends. The Lord made us, we belong to him. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. The Lord made us, we belong to him. Give thanks to him, bless his name, for he is good. The Lord whose kindness endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. The Lord made us, we belong to him. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to share the inheritance with me. He replied to him, Friend, who appointed me as your judge and arbitrator? Then he said to the crowd, Take care to guard against all greed, for though one may be rich, One's life does not consist of possessions. Then he told them a parable. There was a rich man whose land produced a bountiful harvest. He asked himself, what shall I do? For I do not have space to store my harvest. And he said, "Ah, this is what I shall do. I shall tear down my barns and build larger ones. There I shall store all my grain and other goods, and I shall say to myself, Now, as for you, you have so many good things stored up for many years. Rest, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this night your life will be demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, to whom will they belong? Thus it will be for the one who stores up treasure for himself, but is not rich in what matters to God. The Gospel of the Lord. So this morning um, we find ourselves in the letter of Paul to the Ephesians, and this is a particularly relevant um, discussion of Paul's. Um, because it highlights some of the things that we as Catholics believe. And it points to something that comes out of Reformation theology that we would say kind of shades the equation um, in in a way that's unfortunate. You know, when um, Luther began the Reformation, when he began looking at theology and deviating from the theology of the church and making his own theology up, he looked pretty much largely at Paul and didn't so much look at the Gospels. And so for him, looking at this passage in Ephesians, looking at the fact that Paul says, by grace you have been saved, by grace you have been saved through faith, Luther said, aha, there it is right there. That's the whole ball of wax. It's just grace. It's only grace. It's only faith and nothing more kind of odd perspective, especially since just a couple sentences later, Paul mentions to us that even though it's all grace, that grace is there and operates through us in Christ Jesus for good works. So we as Catholics say it's not only grace, it's how we participate with that grace. Because we look at the parables of Christ, and Christ is pretty explicit about it, right? The parable of the talents, 
He gives so much to this one, so much to that one, so much to this one. All of them are huge amounts. I mean, lifetimes worth of earnings. Gives all of these gifts to people. And whom does he praise? And whom does he criticize? He praises those who take those gifts that are given by God and put them to use in their lives. Who put them to use for the good of others and the good of God in his people's lives. And he criticizes the one who takes the gift and buries it and only brings it out on the last last day. I mean, we are right in saying, we are correct in reading that grace is a gift from God. It is completely unmerited. It is completely God's initiative. But imagine if I gave you a gift and you set it out on the table, unopened, unused, unappreciated. What good would that gift be of you? And if at the end of all you came back to me and said, Father Larry, you gave me this wonderful gift, I'm giving it back to you, I might look at you like you're funny and say, oh, that was a cheesecake. You had that sitting out all those years? You see, gifts are given to be appreciated. They're given to be used. They're given for the good of those to whom we give the gifts and to those who they love. It always comes down to God's grace. It is only through the grace we receive at baptism that we are able to do those good works of supernatural merit. So none of us can say, I'm the reason that I'm a good guy. I'm the reason that I'm going to heaven. In the way that the guy in today's parable did. Look at all the great stuff I did. Look at all the stuff I have stored up. Now I don't have to worry about anyone else. I can eat and drink. I can party because I've done it all. And here, as in the rest of Jesus' teachings, Jesus points out to us, no, you don't get to heaven on your own merits. You get to heaven on God's grace and by your cooperation with it. So, as we go forward today. Remember the grace that is in your heart. Remember the gift that God gives you. And don't forget to break it out and to use it for the benefit of his people. Let's stand and offer our prayers to our Heavenly Father. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For all church leaders, that they may be guided by the Holy Spirit in leading their flocks, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For government leaders, international organizations, and for all who seek an increase in charity throughout the world, let us pray to the Lord. For all God's children who lack the basic necessities of life, may their needs be met and may they be blessed with the strength and support they need. Let us pray to the Lord. For this faith community, may the Holy Spirit guide our actions in making this house of worship a welcoming place. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who have died in the light of faith, may they rest in peace and love of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, For the health and welfare of Michelle Angers, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, For those prayers and intentions held close in our heart, let us pray to the Lord. Good and gracious God, hear our prayers this morning and in your mercy answer them. 
through the intercession of the North American martyrs, grant us the courage to proclaim our faith and our use of your grace in everything we do and everything we say. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we venerate the passion of your martyrs, Jean and Isaac and companions, grant that through this, worthy, through this sacrifice, O Lord, we may proclaim worthily the death of your only begotten Son who, not content with encouraging the martyrs by word, strengthen them likewise by example, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord. Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God. For the blood of your blessed martyrs, poured out like Christ's to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your power, and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith we proclaim therefore as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection 
we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. Please join in our, our prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. So um, since I'm distributing communion by myself today, um, I'll just take turns going from section to section, pretty much similar to what we do. Just be patient. I'll be moving from side to side. And I would ask that over in that side, if you wouldn't mind, to just come around the back to the center when we get this part of the, the church.
bit of Let us pray. Having fed upon heavenly delights, we humbly ask you, O Lord, but that by the example of the North American martyrs, we may bear in our hearts the marks of your Son's charity and suffering and ever enjoy the fruit of perpetual peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So, have you ever seen God at work out there in the streets, uh, Giant Eagle, Home Depot, wherever you are in your neighborhood, have you ever seen God working? Oh, it's easy. And you can see it today. And all you have to do is be the hands of Jesus. Because when you take God's grace and put it into action in your life, then you see God working in the world. Take that initiative today. Be God's voice, be God's hands. Act in the grace you have been given and bring God to the people that you meet today. The Lord be with you. And May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.